Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Blackburn. I'm um, in charge of sales for uh, Vortex Spaces um, within Arcane Technology. I will be uh, conducting the webinar today on uh, Vortex Spaces and show you um, how to in import your SketchUp project inside uh, Vortex Spaces and create uh, instant renderings and also uh, walk through visit uh, with the application. Um, the application that we're using today is called uh, Zoom. Uh, if you look somewhere on your screen, you should see there's a, there's a, a chat window. So if you have any questions uh, during the webinar, please don't wait until the end. Um, just go in the chat and um, ask your question. You can also let me know if uh, there are any issues with uh, the audio or the camera or the screen or whatever. Uh, so don't hesitate to go and uh, ask me any questions. So um, today's webinar is pretty simple. Uh, like I said, I'll show you how to um, how to convert a project in, uh, in in spaces from SketchUp. And uh, so basically within one hour, we, you will be able to see exactly what it takes to uh, convert a project into a finished uh, video um, with our application. So uh, first thing, what I'll do, I'll just share my uh, whole screen here and show you everything there at the same time. So um, what you're seeing right now, this is a, a standard uh, SketchUp project that I got actually from uh, one of my customers for a demonstration. Um, <clears throat> you, don't, you don't really have anything special to do in your uh, SketchUp projects before you want to export to spaces. Um, the only thing that you really need to know is that uh, when we import a SketchUp project in spaces, we basically group all of the items uh, based on the texture that they have uh, applied on. So, you know, in this case, uh, all of those beige cabinets, for example, when I go and select them in spaces, they will all be grouped together. So that means, you know, you don't really have to go and look look for every, uh, you know, specific texture that you want to use, because this is really one of the nice aspects of uh, Vortex Spaces that we, we do supply the uh, the textures along with the, with the app. So you don't have to go in and try to find them yourself. But um, overall, you know, if you can just group uh, group items by color, uh, for example, you, I have a lot of customers that will just end up having, you know, like blue, yellow, red, and green. Um, the only thing that is, uh, is nice to do is, uh, you know, if you can uh, put, for example, a texture that has a, a wood grain direction on stuff that should have a wood grain direction because we'll basically reapply the textures uh, using the same grain direction as what it is in SketchUp. So um, in my SketchUp project, uh, I have installed my uh, Vortex Spaces extension. Uh, to do that, it's pretty simple. Uh, in SketchUp, you can go here in the window, then uh, extension warehouse. And from there, you just go and look for the Vortex spaces extension and uh, from there you can uh, you can install it if you've installed uh, extension before uh, it works exactly the same way so as soon as you install it then after that you can go to uh, again windows and then extension manager and just make sure that you have enabled uh, the extension after that you'll have those three buttons that will be showing up here um, so what those three buttons are doing, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. So the first one will allow you to position lighting inside your project. Um, the way it works, uh, you know, is that in spaces you can adjust all of your lighting live, uh, but we need to know where to place uh, those lights. So in SketchUp, um, what you can do, is just click here on the light button, and then all you have to do is basically just go in and click wherever you want to uh, position your light. So for example, if I click once here, then uh, it will just attach uh, the tip of my light there. And after that, I can decide where to point that light. I can also just double click on it and basically we'll just make it by default point down. And then, you know, I can just go around and add lights like that pretty much anywhere I want in my project. Um, I'll just put a couple here. Uh, we can also add the lights directly inside spaces, which is what I do most of the time now. Uh, and mainly, you know, uh, again, because I know exactly what that light will be uh, doing when I add them inside spaces. So uh, it's, it's, you know, removes a lot of the guesswork uh, because, you know, every time you add one light, you just see exactly what, what kind of effect it will look like. Uh, so now I'll just go and put one here. Another one right here. Like that. So, you know, for, for the other lights, what I'll do, I'll just place them directly inside spaces. Um, so what I'll do now, I'll just click here on the export button. Uh, what it will do is it will just 
rewrap that whole project in, into a, like a 3D file, uh, including all of the textures also that have been applied inside your SketchUp drawing. So in this case, what I'll, I'll just call it like uh, webinar PM and save it like that. So what I'll do right now, I'll just save it on, on my desktop. Uh, when we do that, we, uh, like I said, we basically just regroup everything in the in the 3D file, all of the textures as well, like they will be showing up inside spaces. Um, you know, a couple of things that people uh, need to watch out uh, if you want to work with spaces. Um, there are a couple of objects, uh, and a lot of people sometimes they don't really take a look at that. Or um, if you import objects from the, the the 3D warehouse, sometimes you'll have objects that will that will be really heavy uh, in terms of polygons. So that means that, uh, that like the 3D objects uh, is very complex. Uh, it has nothing to do with the, the physical size of the object. It's, it's really like the, the number of details. Uh, you know, really often what you need to look, uh, look for is, uh, you know, the plants, for example, uh, really often the plants will be very, very heavy, heavy objects. Uh, you know, I've seen projects where one plant was just more than the whole project altogether. So, you know, sometimes when you go in the 3D warehouse, just look at the number of polygons uh, of the objects and that, that will uh, help you a lot, especially if, you, if your computer doesn't have, uh, you know, a, like a very big graphic card, for example. Uh, so now my project is exported. You know, it takes about, uh, depending on the projects, it, it can be like 10 seconds to maybe a minute uh, for something that would be larger. Now I'll just uh, turn on my uh, spaces. So this is the start screen inside Vertex Spaces. On the left side, I've got a couple of inspiration scenes. Uh, there are uh, demo projects. Basically, they'll just come preloaded inside the app. And on the right side, I've got all of the projects I've been working on uh, lately. Um, on the bottom here, we have uh, the menu bar. Uh, just so you know, you can just do a, like a quick right click somewhere on the screen to make that bar appear or disappear. Um, so in this case, what I want to do is click on add a new project. And now I'll just go and find the one that is uh, right there on my desktop and click open. I can either uh, leave the same name or change it at this point. It doesn't matter for me, so I'll just leave it like that. And now uh, spaces will basically just be loaded. Uh, into a 3D environment, mostly like a, like a, a video game, for example. Um, this is also, you know, one of the reasons why I always try to suggest people to, uh, you know, close the rooms as, as much as possible, because uh, when you're inside spaces, that means you can look in, ev you know, every side and every direction. So now uh, the project is loaded. So you see already it looks a lot better than uh, what it was in, in uh, SketchUp, and I haven't done anything to the project yet. Um, so what what should we do first? Uh, you need to, do, to know how to move around. So to do that, uh, if you use your mouse, you can use the left click on your mouse and hold. And that's basically just like if I was turning my head around. So you can look in you know, any directions like that. If you do the same thing with the right click, it's called a pen. So you know, with a pen, it's just like if I was putting my hand on the screen and just moving that image around. So like that, it, it will be easy just to go and, and move up, move down, move sideways as well. Uh, you can use the wheel on the mouse and just wheel in and out, and that will follow, uh, you know, where you put the mouse. So, you know, if I put it right there on the sink, you see, like, it will just go in and zoom right there on the sink itself. Uh, you can also use the arrows on the keyboard, so left, right arrows to uh, turn left and right, uh, up, down to go back and forth inside the project. You can also, if you hold shift and go left and right, you'll be sliding from one side to, to the other. Uh, but on a parallel line, like that. Um, after that, um, there's, uh, oh yeah, there, there's also one other thing that is nice to know and I, I pretty much always forget to mention people, but uh, when you scroll in, if you hold control, uh, you'll still, you know, move in, but now much slower. So, you know, if you want to, to have like a very precise, be, be in a very precise location in your plan, you just go fast and then hold control to go like very, very slow and zoom in like very, very slowly. Um, so now we know how to move around. Next step would be uh, basically to change the material. So the way it works, like I said, uh, we basically create a group with everything that has the same texture inside SketchUp. So, uh, you know, if I click on my floor, you see it will start flashing in red. That means that this is my active selection. 
from there, I'll click in my floorings and go and put something. So you see like I've got different options of flooring. If I go and just click, it will just change right there live on the screen. Like that. Um, also, when, when I do apply, uh, there's a small window there where I can uh, rotate my texture. So if I want to change the wood grain direction, for example, and just put it like that instead. Um, and you know, like the same way will work for, for pretty much anything in my, in my room. Um, and also, you know, um, we, we will group everything that has the same texture. But if you click one more time on an object, you'll see it will create a different group of selection. Um, so depending on how the objects will be made, if they are made inside components, basically we'll just go and select like that one component and then like one part inside a component. So uh, depending on, 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 on the objects and how they're made, uh, you'll, you'll have like different levels of selections. And at each level of selection, you can always hit control and just go and add objects to your selection. For example, uh, you know, I could just go and assign a color that's like, like this only on those. And then when I go and click on everything else, you see it will select everything else except those four, uh, four panels. What I'll do, I'll just go and put um, like a million colors. Um, also, uh, you know, like any textures that we place inside the app, uh, we always try to match, uh, you know, the type of reflection and finish um, of the actual product. So for example, you know, like countertops, when I go and place one, um, you'll see like it becomes like very, it's more like a high gloss, you know, if I move around, uh, you know, and same thing for the melamines, flooring, bricks, ceramics, uh, the stainless and everything. So even if the color looks right uh, when you first import it, it's always better to go in and use the textures uh, that are supplied with the app, uh, you know, even for the handles like that. Uh, and, and mainly because when I start playing with the lights uh, in my project, uh, you see like that having the right material will make a, a huge difference. Uh, you can even go and select, uh, you know, like the objects like that. I'll go and select my sink and put like a high glass there. I'm going to change my ceramic to something else. Um, maybe something darker. something like that maybe um then uh we also have uh, glass materials and you will see like this is something that sometimes people ask me a question you see like those glasses right now uh if i click on that uh, nothing will happen and this is mainly uh you know if i click on a glass that is imported from sketchup um it, it is meant to be a click through glass so i will not be able to select it uh, so what I do sometimes for objects that uh, should be glass, but I, I, I want to have a little bit more control, for, like those uh, those two balls, like uh, lights, or I don't know how to call them. Um, we have a category called glass and mirrors. And in there, uh, you know, if I go and just put my glass, you see now it, it gives me a little bit more options and types of glasses and colors and reflections and all of that that I can play with. Um, so like that. Then after that, um, once I've selected most of my materials inside my project, what I can do is start playing with my lights. So by clicking on my uh, light icon uh, there on the top right, it will be uh, showing me on the screen all of the lights that have been placed in my project up to uh, this moment. So um, all the lights from SketchUp, and you see when I click one light, it will just create um, it will just create a group of lights uh, within all all of the lights. So basically, all the lights at the same height level will be grouped together. And we, we kind of assume that they will have the same job. But you can also use control on your keyboard and just add lights or remove lights from your selection. Uh, once you have your lights selected like that, you have a panel that will be showing up here uh, with different options for those lights. So first, uh, you have the type of lights. So what you're seeing right now is a, uh, what we call a spotlight. So it means it starts from a small point and just goes wider as it goes down. Then you have the intensity that you can play with. You've got also the range. The range is how far from that light objects will be affected by it. Uh, so, you know, really often if you're talking uh, of lights on a countertop like that, it's pretty better to have like a, like a shorter range and, uh, you know, like, like an intensity just a bit uh, higher than normal. Uh, you also have the angles when we're talking about the, the spotlight where you can just move the angle. You can play with temperatures so on the top right uh, will be blue. On the left will be orange, uh, like that. So you, 
You can just play with different shades of colors. Um, this is something that I, I, I normally tell people, you know, try to play with different shades of colors and, you know, having some more blue on one side and more orange on the other side will just make it look a little bit more real uh, at the end. In the case of lights underneath the cabinets like that, uh, what I personally like to do is uh, switch them to what we call a spotlight. So compared to the point light, the spotlight is more like a ball of light. So, you know, it will be emitting light in all different directions. And I can also click here on my uh, arrows and start moving mo my lights around. So you see like it will just show up like, uh, like tools here to move the lights around. So if you click on one of the arrows like that, I can move it in one direction um, or in this direction, for example. And if I use a square in the middle, that means I can move it in two different directions at the same time. And what's nice, you know, like as you can see right now, like you can see the effect of that light live uh, as soon as you move it around. So, you know, it makes it like very easy to position them perfectly inside your, inside of your drawing. So um, then I'll go and pick, uh, for example, those two lights here. I'll just switch them to point lights as well and put like a, a bigger range. So like it will start lighting up on my cabinets as well. And again, I'll just change the color temperature a little bit. Uh, on a project like that, I'll probably add a couple of more lights as well. So uh, in this case, you see here, there's a button with a, a plus. So if I click on that, I can basically just go in and click wherever I want to have lights. So this is actually one trick that I like to do is that, uh, you know, I always try to uh, put a couple of lights that will be a little bit farther from my project um, like that. And those I'll switch them to point light and just move them up at about high level. And when, when I do that, it will basically just help uh, create reflections and stuff um, when, I, when I move around my project. And it also helps giving like an overall lighting to the project that will be uh, really nice. Like that. Um, oh, I forgot to change that here. There's also, if you, uh, if you look in the categories, there's a button there called InDesign. When you click on that, it will give you access only to the materials that have been applied already inside your project. So, you know, if you try to add that same, same project on something else, um, it will be a, a lot easier. I'll go and change color on those cabinets as well. Kind of forgot to do it. Like that. Um, then, uh, you know, even if, even like the wall colors and everything, you know, since we try to match the reflection uh, of, of the finishes, uh, you know, when, when you put uh, a paint finish, uh, light will be reflecting a little bit differently on the, on the panel. I'll just go and put those panels here like the same color as uh, everything else. It kind of look weird a little bit. Um, maybe in that sense, what I should do is uh, just go and add one more light here. Like that. So uh, now it looks pretty cool. Uh, there's also, there, there's a tool inside the app. Uh, it's not it's not a setting or actually the, the, anything that you can do, but it's called like the eye adaptation tool. So that means that uh, when you move around to uh, places where it's too bright or, or too dark, uh, like the screen will basically just readjust uh, itself. So depending on what you're looking for, sometimes when you move around, you see like the overall like brightness will kind of change. Uh, so, so we try to look at the overall uh, lighting of what you're looking at at any given moment and readjust it. So this is really meant to, uh, to uh, mimic uh, like the camera on an iPhone, for example, if you move inside a room that is very bright and another one that is very dark, you'll see like the, the whole screen will kind of dim when you move around. So this is meant to, uh, to give the same, same type of effect. Um, then after that, when I click on my second button there with a the sunlight, um, I've got more options. So first one is called the ambient intensity. And what it is, it's just like an overall lighting. So if I look here, for example, where I've got no lights um, like uh, pointing, uh, it's very dark. Uh, but if I play with the ambient intensity, you know, I can bring it like very, very bright as well. So uh, what, I, what I advise people is, is in most cases, just start with your actual lights. And then after that, you go in the ambient intensity and just lower it a little bit. Um, and then we've got the ambient temperature where it can make uh, the whole ambient intensity uh, warmer or colder. 
after we have options like the ambient inclusion. And as you will see, like most of those options, they already have, uh, you know, preset values. So that means they're already on, they're, they're activated as soon as you get inside your project. It's only that if you want to add a little bit more or remove some, you can, uh, you can always have, uh, go, and, go and play with it. Uh, so ambient inclusion, what it is, it's uh, like shadows that you'll see like at the corner of objects. So if I go and increase intensity, you see like it becomes like, like much darker in the corner. And then we also have the range, which is like how far from that corner uh, that shadow will be showing up. Um, so again, like normally, I pretty much never play with that, that range. And the intensity sometimes, you know, depending on the colors, uh, especially if, you, if, you, if you're working with projects that are pretty much all white, uh, in most cases, those are uh, like the hardest one to make look right. Um, so playing with the ambient occlusion will be uh, helping a lot. Uh, we also have after that uh, the option for the sun. Uh, the sun is a light that is positioned outside the project. So by playing with the direction, you see like that, I can bring it inside my room. If I do that, I can also play with the elevation and make it go uh, you know, higher and lower inside the project. I can make it warmer, I can make it more intense or less intense. And uh, you know, like the, the, the sun is really something that adds like so much life to your project. Uh, in most cases, what, what I try to do is just to hit as many objects as possible uh, from that sunlight. So, you know, when I move it around, I'll just make sure that it goes through, you know, the chairs, the bottles or whatever, and make sure it creates like very nice shadows um, all over the place. Then uh, if I click on the gear button right there, uh, first thing I have is called field of view. So field of view is just like a wide angle on camera. So let's say, you know, I, I was like stuck here, there's a wall behind me, so I cannot just see like the whole thing. Um, with the field of view, I can basically just cheat uh, on what I'm seeing at one given time. So, you know, just like, a, like I said, the wide angle of the camera. Uh, this is something that is very useful if you work with smaller, uh, smaller rooms, like uh, bathrooms, restrooms, uh, if you work uh, with uh, walk-in closets, for example. So, uh, you know, you can kind of distort the room a little bit so, so it looks better. You just have to make sure that you don't do it too much, otherwise it will just start like distorting stuff uh, on, and, and it doesn't look real anymore. After we have uh, the bloom, the bloom is, uh, you know, if you, if you look at something as, for example, here that is bright and I increase the bloom, you'll see like everything that is bright will be emitting some kind of a fog. Um, then we have the threshold, which means uh, what will be affected by that, that bloom option like that. So in this case, I'll just put it less a little bit. Um, after we have the sun shaft, uh, sun shaft is in effect as when you look at the sun coming from the window, um, just try to increase it. Sometimes you just have to be in the perfect viewing angle. Mm -hmm. I don't see it now. Maybe from here. I guess, um, let me just show you, uh, I'll, I'll just, just uh, go over something else and then, then we'll come back to this one. Uh, some, like the sun shaft is basically, that's an effect as you know, when you look through a window and you have the sun kind of like in, right in the camera, you can see uh, like the beam of sunlight coming inside the room. Um, what I'll do, I'll just go and, and click on the, um, actually explain vignetting that will add a darker area around the screen. Again, you know, you can just crank it or, change it to your liking. Um, then if I click on choose a skybox, that will add an image outside of the project. Uh, so basically, if I go and click on, on this image, you see it just adds a picture outside. And this, oh, actually, now we can see the sun shaft pretty good when we're outside. Um, so those are 360 images. So that means that they will fit in all, all of the different windows. So if you have windows on, on you know, all sides of that, that room, um, it will match in all the different windows. It's really meant to be watched from inside the room. So, you know, when you move around, it looks, uh, it looks very real. Um, after you've applied that uh, skybox, you can also change the exposure. So you can make it brighter or darker. Uh, you can also rotate it and choose exactly what you want to have in front of that, uh, that window. And actually, now, now we can see the sun shaft pretty good. And the sun shaft are being also affected by whatever is 
inside the skybox. So, you know, if I go in and turn it around, you see like it will basically, depending on what you have, it will give different effects inside the room like that. Um, so now that my project is pretty much optimized, what's left to do is uh, set up the viewpoints. So if I click on that Ford button right there, uh, you see I've got uh, different viewpoints there. First one, um, there's already one there called uh, 3D. And the reason for that is because in my SketchUp drawing, I've got a 3D uh, a scene called 3D. Um, so like if you play scenes and if you put 10 scenes inside your SketchUp project, when you open here, uh, you'll have 10 viewpoints. So, you know, the idea is that if I click on that, it will just bring me exactly to that same position as uh, the scene that you had uh, inside SketchUp. And from there, you can go and start adding, uh, you know, adding more, more viewpoints. And to do so, you just position yourself like how you like it and you just click on plus. When you do that, it adds a new, uh, a new uh, viewpoint. You can also rename it. So I can call it like back island, for example. Um, then I'll just go in and move around a little bit and show something different. Um, also, you know, what, what's nice when, when you uh, go, go and pick your viewpoints, uh, like viewpoints will be used for rendering. So any viewpoints that you go in and add like that uh, will be saved as a rendered image. Uh, when you save the project, uh, there will also be the views that we go uh, from one to the other uh, when recording the video walkthrough. Uh, so, you know, it's always a good idea to go in and, and put what I call like in between views. So you, you have like the generic uh, nice views where you, you see everything like very wide of that kitchen, but you also have a view where you just look at the sink or you just look at the oven or, you, you know, uh, you, you go down in between the island uh, like that and the, the regular countertop. So, customer will kind of like imagine himself a little bit more inside the whole project. Uh, you can also, for example, add like, like close ups like that and just like finish it right there next to my uh, bottle of red wine. And then on the bottom here, I've got the speed of movement in between the different points. So, you know, if I click on one point, now we'll just move and go uh, exactly to that view. And if I press play, uh, it will just go from point one, two, three, four, five, and just uh, basically show me or preview me uh, what my video uh, will look like when it's done. So uh, after that, what I can do now is just save my project. So to do that, I just click on save design here. And then uh, in this case, I'll call it option one and save it. And as I mentioned before, um, I don't remember exactly how many uh, viewpoints I've placed, but uh, if I click on gallery here, uh, all of my viewpoints have been saved as rendered images now that I can save. They are JPEGs um, that I can send to my customer. They have a 4K resolution, so they're like very nice renders um, like that. And um, what's nice also is that if I go and change the color, change the material, let's say I wanna change my backsplash here to something different. Just change it to this for example. So, you know, if I go now and just save my project again, it will kind of like just delete all of those uh, images and put new ones with that new color and new material uh, being added. Um, then, you can also, uh, you can save like different options. So let's say I wanted to uh, just change my countertop here to something different. When I go and save it, I can call it, for example, option two and save it. And now uh, it will allow me just to switch from version one and number two. Both, both versions will both have their own sets of pictures. So if I go in gallery now, you see I've got my gallery with that, uh, those choices of colors. And I can also just go from um, here when I click on load design, I can uh, just go back to option one and uh, switch from option one to number uh, option two and show that to my customer as well. Um, after, uh, from there, we can uh, we can record a video. Uh, to record a video, it's always a good idea just to go and position yourself on the first point uh, because otherwise, like the video recording will start from where you are, just go to the first point. Um, so like that, what I'll do, I'll just click on uh, record video. And now uh, the video uh, will start. By default, what it does, it will uh, generate uh, the introduction with the Vortex Spaces logo uh, on it. 
and then uh, the name of the project, and then the visit will just start moving around. So you see when, when it, it records, uh, the quality live on the screen will just lower, uh, be lowered a little bit, and then uh, it starts moving around. So for a whole project like that, it will probably just take a couple of minutes. Uh, when you record a video, you can record from 720p all the way up to a 4K resolution. Um, you can also pick how many images per second you will record, so you can go all the way up to 60 hertz. Um, an advice that I like to give people in most cases is just to go with the highest resolution that they, they have available. Uh, depending on the graphic card that you have on your computer, uh, you might only see 720 and 1080p for uh, the video resolution. If you have a better uh, than average graphic card, then you'll have also the 2K and 4K options for uh, the recording. Once the video is done recording, it will ask me if I want to send it to YouTube. Um, there's a built-in upload to YouTube inside the application. Uh, the reason mainly we, uh, why, why we uh, advise people to go and uh, share their pro projects on YouTube is first, it's very easy. It's built in the app. Um, to, uh, you know, like anybody knows YouTube, like anybody can go on YouTube and watch a video. Um, and you know, like with YouTube, uh, when, when you upload a video on YouTube, you can send either like unlisted video links, private links or public links. Uh, we suggest to go with unlisted. So that means that if I go on your channel and I look, uh, you know, inside your channel, I will not see that video. But if you send me a, a, a link of that unlisted video, that means that I can open it on my phone, it works uh, on my iPad, on my uh, computer, on my smart TV, on my Apple TV or whatever, it works. I can also myself take that link and share it with my uh, brother, sister or mother or whatever. And, and uh, they, they get to see that video and comment on it. So you, you kind of start like a small local marketing within your company. Um, and then what most people will do is once the project is, is done, uh, you know, sold or signed or installed, uh, you can always go back to your YouTube channel and make that video public. And now it will just act as a great publicity for your company that, you know, you can start sharing on uh, any social networks and, and Facebook and all of that and make, uh, you know, like great publicity for your company. Uh, we also offer a rebranding of the application. That means that we'll re we will replace the Vortex Spaces logo at the beginning and end of the videos, as well as the uh, watermark that you see there at the corner. Uh, by your own logo. And to do that, it's a one-time fee of $750. Uh, we take your logo, we, we create an animation with it, and then um, we push it back to your application. So it's not something that you need to pay yearly. It's just uh, whenever you, you want to have a new logo, I guess. Uh, so it's just a, a one-time fee. Um, while this is uh, recording, what I'll do, I'll just uh, pull up here a screen where uh, there's an example that I like to show people. It's uh, Naples Closet. This is one of our customers uh, who got his own branding. So at the beginning, you see now it's showing his own introduction uh, in, in the video, showing up his logo. And then after that, uh, the visit will start. And then uh, if I go right here at the end, uh, you see like there's a video conclusion with his own logo. So, you know, basically Naples Closet, if you go on their, uh, on their page, like, Pretty much any like all the videos are right there like they, they were made with spaces uh, for this guy it's it's a tremendous uh, value you know like being able to output those videos like very quickly uh, to his customers there's also an option of uh, 360 videos uh, this is a better uh, better option if you have a good graphic card just let me know when I can activate it there's no charge for that um, it's it's only that we, we want to make sure that people have a, you know, a good enough graphic card to run it. But basically, instead of having just one camera that goes around the project, it's like having six cameras. So you see, like, I can just go and look in any direction inside my YouTube video, uh, even while the video is going uh, and, and moving inside the room. Um, I can still use my, uh, my mouse and just, you know, change a view and turn like that. And uh, you know it's, it it becomes like so much more impressive when you watch it with a tablet. For example, I can just you know move my tablet around and see uh, you know see different directions. So for the customer, this is a very nice immersive experience. We also have more options with uh, uh, you know vir virtual headsets that will be coming uh, coming along soon as well. Um, here, like this is the the regular Vertex Spaces logo that we have uh, at the beginning of the videos. And, uh, you know, that's basically what it looks like by default. So now I'll just go back here. Uh, you see my video is done recording. 
Um, I've got uh, my panel that Ask Me Found to upload it to YouTube. So all I have to do is just click on uh, Start Upload and it will start uploading to YouTube. I can also change my title, change description. If I go in more options, I've, I can change also the privacy settings. So I can go from unlisted, private, public. So I can basically just decide from here what I like, how, how I want it to, uh, to appear. Um, I can also just make it big and, uh, and look what it looks like. So I can basically just like preview it like that. Uh, when I'm MP, I can just click on start upload. Um, otherwise, I'll just click on the arrow and then the video will still be uh, in the gallery uh, of the application like that. I can still watch it from here. Um, there's also one, uh, one setting that is nice to know uh, in the application is that if I click on, oops, just one back too much. So if I click on settings uh, and then performance, uh, in there, there's a super sampling option. And what it does basically, you know, on the computer that I'm using right now, I've got a, a pretty good graphic card. Um, so I can use the super sampling at a maximum state. Um, I can also just put it at a uh, regular one. And what it does basically, it will just reduce the quality of the live, uh, live view on, on, the, on your screen. So basically everything that you see inside the project while you're adjusting your materials and lights will be a little bit more pixelated, a little bit, uh, you know, less uh, good looking. Um, but all of the videos and images you will save will be uh, re-increased to the full quality. Uh, so, you know, if you have a computer that doesn't have a, that good of a graphic card, you can just go and lower it. You can go like 2.5 or whatever. Uh, so you'll see that when you start moving around, it will be more, more fluent, you know, uh, a little bit, uh, not fluent, fluid uh, when you move around like that. Um, and there's also in the settings here, video and photo. So you, uh, this is where you can pick the resolution. You can also pick the frame rate. Uh, frame rate, you should actually always leave it at 60. Um, then we have the option for VR 360. Uh, we also have uh, presented by, which is the name that will be showing up uh, at the beginning of the video where you can just put your company name or uh, the designer name. Um, so yeah, and there's also one other thing that is uh, nice to know is, uh, for example, if I go inside this project and decide to make a modification, um, so let's say I wanted to just add something, I'll, I'll just go and add a couch from the 3D warehouse inside my room. Just put a, I guess this couch, it's a bit too small for me to judge if it's nice or not, but. Oh, it's actually very ugly, so. Mm -hmm. Try sofa. Well, it's not, it's not much nicer, but what I'll do now, I'll just go and place that sofa inside my room. Give it like an angle like that. Um, and, and maybe like the reason why I was doing that is just to show you what that third button does. And that's a re-export. So what it does, it just like re-export a project over the old project. So when I click on that, it will basically just overwrite uh, the file of my first project. Uh, and as soon as this is done, like Spaces will know that there's a new version of that file and reload it automatically. So I'll just increase my quality here. So you see now it's uh, almost done exporting.
All right, so it's almost done now. Yeah, okay. And you see now like Spaces just noticed that there's a new version. Even if uh, Spaces was closed, what would have happened is that next time you open a project, it will say, hey, there's a new version. Do you want to load it? Just click yes. And what it does, it basically just keeps and, and conserves all of, all, all of the modifications and the adjustments you've done with the lights uh, and materials and will only load the difference. So in this case, you know, it just adds that couch right there in the corner uh, that I can just go and basically go and change. Because I want it to be like a leather, leather couch like that. So that's pretty much it. Um, don't, don't know if you have uh, any questions. Uh, I would say I'm pretty much uh, done with the webinar right now. So if you have a question, it's uh, pretty much the time to do so. Uh, otherwise, we offer free trials of the application. So you can try it for 30 days. Uh, you can just send me an email uh, if you have any questions. Uh, you can also come on our website. We have a chat, a live chat, where you can go and uh, ask more questions. Um, and then after that, the subscription would be thirteen fifty a year for one license, or three uh, three eighty seven and fifty cents for three months uh, that you can pick from. So um, other than that, I really want to uh, thank you uh, so much for uh, taking the time of joining me today uh, during this webinar. And uh, hopefully you'll have a good time uh, playing around with spaces and making uh, way, much, uh, way more sales uh, with your new presentations. Thank you very much and bye.